welcome to the Investor Coaching Show. Here's your host, Paul Winkler. And welcome to the Investor Coaching Show. I'm Paul Winkler. Talking money, investing, financial planning, things that uh, I think in general you ought to know about. You know, so, um, one of the things that I've been, you know, just discussing with a few people here and there, you know, you have like identity theft protection, those types of things and in, in those types of programs out there. And I really haven't talked an awful lot about that. Uh, and in general, I think that the risks are getting, they're just getting really, really out there as far as people getting their identity uh, taken and then being scammed and, and just the, the risks of that. And you know, so, and, and a lot of this stuff, it's not terribly expensive to go out and get that type of protection, but it doesn't protect against everything. You know, so one of the things that we have to be super, super aware of, and we in my industry have to do a lot of education on this particular topic, is how to protect yourself against scams and watching out for opening you know, emails and opening up attachments and, and getting into, you know, clicking on URLs you probably should stay away from and, and those types of things. But there was an article that was... Um, Man, it was, a, you know, it was from Business Insider. And I just thought I would share this with you just, just because the topic is, whoa, never really thought a lot about this. But the article was about a couple that decided that they were going to get a pool in their backyard. You know, they're, they're like, and this is back, you know, when COVID was a big deal in 2020, you know, they were like, we got to do something. And a lot of people were doing that. A lot of people were fixing up their homes. They were getting additional rooms. They were making rooms in offices. And, and they were, you know, if they weren't, <laughs> they weren't just moving to the suburbs, uh, you know, because they were moving from the cities to the suburbs, uh, they, they were doing things to fix up their home. And of course that drove up the prices, a lot of things. But one of the things that, um, that people were doing is doing outdoor recreation. You know, so looking at ways to, you know, fix up the place. Well, there was, the story was about a couple that had hired a contractor to build a pool. And th this contractor, you know, they hired him. They said, you know, said, yep, you're, uh, you're hired. And then what happens is they start trying to call him, get the pool done. And they're calling, they're calling, and there was supposed to be a deposit of about $31,000 that this person had to make, these, this couple had to make to the pool contractor. And they were phoning, trying to get a hold of them, couldn't get a hold of them. They wanted to be first in line, just like anybody else would want to be. You know, I want to get, get this thing done. You know, summer's coming, and I want to be out there playing in the pool. Well, what happened, they call them in April, and they try calling them in May. And then, you know, they get into, the su into summer, and he wasn't responding. They, they couldn't get him to, you know, call back or anything like that. And, and you, you can imagine the guy, there was a huge demand for this guy's services. So, you know, July 5th, they actually get a call. They get a response. He emails that he's ready to begin. And, uh, you know, that he could start within a week. And then he reminded them that due to the contract that they had, you know, they had written a contract and signed this contract that he was supposed to get $30,000 from them before the work commenced. And then what happens, they give this email for instruction on how to pay. And, and uh, you know, so the bank branches were closed, but they request that they transfer the money using Zelle. And a lot of you, I've, I've used it before. A lot of people use Zelle uh, to transfer money. Yeah, you because know, you can do it, and it's no, no cost to do it, and, and so on and so forth. And it's pretty easy, right? Because they have daily limits, though. You know, if you've ever done that, if you ever had to transfer a lot, you know that they have daily limits, and, and you might have to only, you might be only able to transfer like $3,500 and, and uh, you know, just a per day, and then maybe $5,000 some days. I don't even know how the system works necessarily. But all of a sudden, this guy starts getting his money. According to the article, he starts getting money and becomes more responsive. 
And they, they said, uh, you know, he asks, do you have all the materials that you're waiting for? They asked in an email. And he goes, yep, mostly. Uh, can you start next week? Yes. And he says, the emails were strange. But, you know, sometimes we read them aloud. You know, whatever their period here, you know, would this make more sense? Maybe the guy's just bad at English. <laughs> you, know, this, you know, maybe not such a great student in uh, school, but, you know, great cool, uh, great, great pool maker, right? And then they sell more money. He sends a receipt because they asked for one for about $23,000 that they had sent so far. And a few minutes later, they get a, the signed receipt from the, the pool company. It's printed on letterhead and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, they get this thing. And, you know, later on the afternoon, they asked him where he was when he was supposed to start the pool. And the guy goes, what? I, I hadn't talked to you guys. I didn't email you guys in a month. So you can imagine the fear going through these people's minds. O-M-G. You haven't heard from us in a month. We've been going back and forth and paying, and you've been responding to our emails. So he goes silent. Just, you know, I didn't send anything to you guys. So then he starts looking into the, the people doing, the, you know, that this article is about, start looking into Zelle and how it works. And I said, you know, it was like PayPal or Venmo. And I remember early on in this show's history, I had actually, e I had actually emailed and gotten uh, one of the founders of PayPal on the show back in the early, early days of, of this. And, you know, there was a book written about the founding of that whole payment system. And I had actually talked to the person and interviewed one of the people that actually was one of the founding people in that, right? You know, so this is fascinating to me to hear how they're talking about how this whole thing works. And it says, you know, they, they let users give one another money directly, you know, free, you can buy pizza, you can pay your rent, you can, you can pay for, you know, yard work and, and all those types of things. Just really a lot of transactions quite easily through Venmo. And in this partic particular person's case, they decided to get a pool built using that app. But they learned that it's an entity that is owned by a company called Early Warning, Warning Services, which is itself owned by a consortium of some really big banks like Chase and Bank of America and Wells Fargo and PNC and Truist and Capital One and U.S. Bank. And the reason for the structure, this, uh, this kind of crazy structure that they've got in this ownership, is that it's really hard for a bunch of really big banks to own something together without forming some kind of a separate company. And it allows the banks not to be liable for losing some, somebody's money. And that's the big thing. You know, you got $30,000 on the line, and now what do you do? Who do you go back at? And, of course, the company comes back and says, hey, you know, we don't have this, we don't have a bad record at all, and, you know, there are people out there, politicians, that are actually looking at this. And, and uh, there was one, one report that there were 45,000 incidents on, uh, you know, with Zell scams in 2022. So it's not that it's used a lot and it may, may look like a huge, huge number, but it's a small percentage, but still that's a lot of people getting scammed out of their money. And what happens, they had looked back at the receipt in this, you know, in this case with their pool, they look back at the receipt and they notice something that, oh my goodness, the letterhead actually had typos. Didn't notice that before. And then they start looking at the Zelle where they sent because you get the email address and that's how you send payments through this network, right? And they start looking and they go, Sunshine Yasmin 48 is one of the email. And they're like, what's that? Personal Breezy at Gmail? Uh, what? And they're looking at who they had sent money to and just, they're beside themselves, this couple. Now, what happened is they started recognizing that trust is really big deal. And I've talked about this here a lot, has, you know, what is amazing about the American economy is that we could have a perfect stranger fighting to get our car back if our car's stolen or if something is, is taken from us. You know, it's, it's interesting that we don't think about how property rights protection is the foundation of how this country works and how the economy works. And they're going, this is a big deal, property rights protection. But what's my property right protection in this particular instance? So they contact Chase and their bank and 
and the person is you know nice enough that they get on there, but they're looking at, at getting a fraud specialist, but they don't know what to do, and they don't know that they can't do anything. Here's where it gets interesting. So here's what happened. They said once whoever it was that got into Gary's email, that this was the pool contractor, they could look through every correspondence. So somebody got a hold of this guy's email, the pool guy. They got in there. They're looking through all the different transactions and emails and all the thing, things that are going on in his company. They familiar, familiarize themselves with the contract, and then they see how much is owed. And then what they do is they start perpetrating, perpetrating the fraud. And, you know, they said it's best not to have, you know, have the victim send you anything directly. But what they do is they hire people to receive the money. And you have the, the personal, the breezies and, and the sunshine Yasmins and, the, you know, the, those email addresses that I was saying. That's how it happened. And these people, more often than not, they said, these email addresses that the money's going to, they're duped themselves. And a lot of times what it is, is a work from home scam. And you see all these things, you can make money from home and make, make money from your own computer. You don't even have to leave your living room. You don't have to get out of your pajamas and, 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 you're, and, and you just sit there and hang out at the house and you make money. Well, what happens, they think that they're moving money to and from bank accounts as part of some kind of legitimate business. That's what's happening. These work from home people. Or maybe all they know is that they get 10% of the money that they forward and they forward to another Zell account and then they don't ask any questions. You know, the people that are working from home, they're just like, I'm making a paycheck. I'm good. Don't ask any questions. You know, I don't know anything. I don't even suspect anything. So Personal Breezy most likely passed our money, they said, onto another account. It may have gone through Estonia, uh, and, and it says uh, the P2P app that converts money to cryptocurrency. Or whoever got the money next used it to buy a Target gift card, and then they were resold in the dark web at a discount. That's another thing that's going on. You can buy these on the dark web, you can buy discounted cards. Anytime something sounds too good to be true, you know, you've heard me say this many, many times regarding investment products that have guaranteed rates of return and they're higher rates of return than you're getting at your bank or anything like that, or there's, there's no risk. Suspect maybe something's up. I mean, just, just be buyer beware. Because sometimes you're not going to get protected. You would think that there are all kinds of protections, but there aren't necessarily. So what happens, they take these things, they, they resell these, you know, these target cards and things like that, and they turn it into crypto. One way or another, they said, our money was almost certainly converted into crypto, and then at some point back into paper currency and spent whatever way the fraudster wanted to spend the money. But once it's in crypto, it's gone says Coleman, a cyber intelligence expert told me, you won't get it back. Now, they said in the article that Zelle almost has no responsibility for what happens to your money on the platform. And they said that the government will eventually be moved to safeguard consumers against this type of fraud. But recognize that you better be super careful out there. You know, they did end up as it turns out, they did end up getting their pool. They did hire the same guy. <laughs> it's interesting. But this time, uh, they paid by a check. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny, but it's like, oh my gosh, can you believe? I mean, just how distressing something like this can be to somebody. I mean, it's just, it's so frustrating. You have no recourse. I know personally that, uh, you know, I had gift cards uh, and somebody had done something with gift cards. You buy these gift cards and then somebody had 
either and and I know that there were some things going on at local grocery stores, but there were some things that made the the actual factory may have been involved. But people actually take the gift cards and they redeem them. And as soon as you actually physically buy them and money goes on them, then they spend the money. Happened to me. I I, I know this can happen. It is really challenging to protect yourself. But recognize that sometimes you've got to be super, super careful out there watching who things are going to, making sure you see the email address the money's going to in this particular case. Really look at the fine print. You know, if the English seems a little bit off, you may be dealing with a fraudster. That's something that I've seen and, and we have learned an awful lot about in our work because we have to spend a lot of time in this particular area. But remember, if there's anything to take out of this, if something seems too good to be true, it probably is fake. And be careful out there when it comes to these payment apps.